Awesome, everyone. Good day, John. Glad to see you in here and welcome, everyone. We're going to get started in just a second here. Thanks for being on time. And thanks for those of you who are just now coming into the room. We're going to talk about uh, this one should go pretty quick. It's a new feature inside of Illustrator CC um, that was just released a couple of weeks ago. And it is a cool thing for people that need to update the same thing that they've used over and over again throughout a design. So think about it this way. If you were, if you were, I want to say smart, but if you were organized, you might use a symbol. You know you're going to need it over and over again. So use a symbol or use something from the Creative Cloud Library and you place that all over your document. Great. That meant you planned ahead. But if you weren't planning ahead and you just use the same, you just copy and paste it or option drag and drop the same thing all over the place, and then you need to make a change, that's where the problem comes in. Because then you'd have to go in and click on every instance of that item to make the same change or delete them all and replace them all and just that that's when it becomes a nightmare all right so with that said uh let's go ahead and switch over to the computer and once we get over to the computer there we go i'll show you what i'm talking about all right so here i've got in adobe illustrator cc uh, multiple artboards and this is now a typical thing that people do they create stationary they create uh different um ad campaigns a different different layouts for a client. And if you do it all in the same document, chances are you're gonna do it on multiple artboards because you can. You can do multiple artboards, the same or same size or different sizes. You can go in specifically and choose what size you want something to be. And whether it's a, a predefined size or a, um, a custom size, no problem. So in this case, we've got two letter heads on the left-hand side. We've got the front and back of an envelope. We've got, it looks like a postcard front and back, and we got a business card front and back. And as you can all see, they kind of all have one thing in common. They have that T logo. And that T logo is not a symbol, not something we got from the CC libraries. It's just there. So with that said, if I needed to make a change to it, previous illustrator, and I had made it a symbol, uh, okay, I'd either have to click on each one and make the same change or delete them all, copy and paste them all over again after I made the change to one. You know, you pick your poison, you pick which one is best for you. But now we don't have to do any of that anymore because I didn't make a symbol. I didn't get it from the CC library. Those T's are just copied and pasted into all the various spots, different sizes. So they were scaled. This one was rotated upside down. And I'm just going to click on one of them. It doesn't have to be the first one. It could be any one of them. And now you have a new option in your um, properties panel. It's called, here, let me zoom into it so you can see it. It's called Start Global Edit. And you also notice that next to Start Global Edit, there is a um, pull down for Global Edit Options. We'll explore the options first, and then we'll show how the feature works. So the options are... In other words, it's going to use Adobe Sensei, our artificial intelligence, to try and go figure out where the rest of these items are. And so how do you want it to match? Do you want it to match just on the appearance, just on the size, both? Or are you just going to let it figure it out? Do you want all the artboards or a specific set of artboards? Because maybe you don't want to change them all. Uh, especially if they're going to be different colors. Maybe on the darker ones... I want, uh, or the darker artboards, like the envelopes and the postcards, maybe I want those to be reversed. I want those to be a different color. In the white ones, or the the um, the letterhead and the business cards, maybe I want those to be a darker color. So that's why you have the option to choose which range of artboards you want to go from. And uh, include the object on the canvas. So yeah, include objects on the canvas as well. So objects that aren't on a particular artboard. All right, so now with that said, I have the object that I want to change selected. So I'm going to go ahead and click Start Global Edit. And what it will then do is just go find all the ones that it thinks are the same. And it did. So it outlined all the ones that it found in blue. Now, if it didn't outline one, then that means for whatever reason, it's been changed significantly enough to where it didn't pick it up as the same object. Uh, if it's, uh, so if you get this case where some, are your, some of yours are left out, that could be the reason why. Now at this point, 
you can change multiple attributes of it. So for example, if I go over to the one that I selected and I scale it, what's cool about that is it will scale all of them in proportion. So it's not making them all the same size as the one I just scaled. It's proportionally scaling them to be a little smaller across the board. So if the client came back or if my art director came back and said, hey, those are just too big, instead of you having to go and figure out, hey, make them 10% smaller or whatever, and you having to go figure out what 10% of each one is, scale one down 10% and it would scale them all down 10%. I'm gonna undo that. The next one, which is my favorite, is that I can change the appearance of it uh, using the properties panel. So if I wanna change the fill, change the stroke, change the opacity or any of the or add effects to it, any of those things are fair game. So for example, let's say the client doesn't like that blue stroke. I can go in and pick, I don't wanna pick the colors of the envelope because then they'll blend into the envelope. So in this case, I'm gonna to have to go pick a different color, something new, and I'm gonna pick something that'll stand out. Not that it's gonna be my favorite, but I'm gonna pick it so it stands out so you can see it. I'll pick a nice pink color. Uh, and it will keep changing the one until you deselect it. So if you wanted to also change something else. Um, and I, I'm sorry, until I click out of that option. So it made them all pink. I wanted to change something else. I can. Uh, let's go change the fill. And let's go change the fill to... Um, where, I want the rest of my colors there. Oh. Where are my colors? Let's do... I don't know why I don't have my fill options there, but ah, I know why. There we go. Because it's in grayscale. Let's go back to RGB. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and pick uh, something that'll go with that pink. Maybe a darker magenta or purple color. All right, and again, once I click out of that, it would change them all. Again, I told you these wouldn't be colors I'd pick for this, but it's colors that will stand out. And of course, you can always go back and say, no, no, no. Those are bad. How about we pick something that will offset that a little bit better? Again, maybe something in the gold family. Something like that. Get a nice gold insert and maybe something that's not so obnoxiously pink. Now we're in the gold, maybe something that is the darker blue that we started with. Something like that. So we get a blue and gold theme going on. All right, but anyway, the point is, without me having to go in and manually touch each one, I can go in and just say, hey, here's the one I wanna change. Go find all the ones that are like it throughout the entire design. Make whatever changes you wanna to make to it and away you go. So I'm not feeling, I'm still not feeling these colors. Let's go back and try one. Oh, I know one that'll stand out. Let's get a nice red fill in there. And maybe not the blue, maybe something not pink either. There we go. Or maybe not that shade of pink. But anyway, you get the idea. Not doing a great job on colors today. But you get the idea that uh, Terry's not good at picking colors today. But you get the idea of how this feature works. So again, whether it's the size, whether it's the attributes of it, whatever it is you want to change, just go back and select for go or select st start global edit. It'll go figure it out. And just so you know that even if I pick a different one and I say start global edit, it still goes and figure out what the rest of them are. So it does not have to be the first one you created. And again, it does work with scale. It also works with position. So even if I move this over, it's moving them all over. So it's working with position, scale, the attributes of the uh, item you selected and pretty much anything you can change about it, any effects. So if I go back and do one more, let's try this. I have not tried this yet. Let's start a global edit and let's lower the opacity of it. And it lowers the opacity of all of them. So global edits good, even if you did not make symbols, even if you did not use libraries, even if you did not use an easier way to go back and change one item and change them all. These are all independent tees, but they all work together thanks to the global edit feature in Illustrator CC. Told you it'd be short, that's it. I even stretched it out a little bit longer just to make it take a few extra minutes just of your time. But I wanted to cover it in depth so you guys get a feel for what this can do. Um, now, one more thing, let's see if this, yeah, so you, 
don't get the option for text to do a global edit. At least I don't see it. Um, but for any graphic or any vector shape or anything like that, you do um, get the option to start a global edit. All right, so global edit for graphics. Use anything else for text because it's not for text. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, I see great tool. I see hello in Cape Town. Hello, Bangladesh. Uh, are these tools available on CS6 too? No, anything I show will not be available on CS6 if I say it's new because we don't go back, I don't know, what was that, eight years ago and put things in the old version. Uh, so CS6, it's time for you to upgrade. You've gotten your money's worth. It's time to move on. All right, with that said, cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye.